Um, tell me from your internship or from your residency, tell me like a, you know, a, a good feeling story or a story that made you, you know, really excited about what you were doing. Um, well, I could tell you about my big fish story. Okay. I like big fish <laughs> <laughs> and I won't embellish it. It's, it's a true story. Yeah. Um, you know, I have been, I had been in surgical training for a long time. I was in surgical training 11 years after graduating medical school before coming to work here with you. We're glad and, you're here. Um, I was, so I was at Harvard for some time and then for multiple two different reasons. And I ended up in Baltimore at the University of Maryland in shock trauma, which is one of the biggest yep. uh, trauma centers and leading trauma center in the US. Um, and it was very busy, very difficult and rigorous training. Yes. And, no, it's and, a world renowned program. And I loved it. And so, um, when I was a chief resident, I was on my trauma rotation and I was the chief resident of trauma and a patient came in, they were middle-aged and were a construction worker and they had been nailing some type of molding to the upper, um, to the ceiling and one of their friends heard a loud thud and the gentleman scream and he had accidentally shot himself in the chest with a nail gun in the chest okay. in the chest with a nail gun. the hand okay <laughs> <laughs> yes okay uh and so he came to shock trauma um as close to death as you yeah. possibly could serious injury and the um, we had been taking care of multiple traumas. I was actually in the operating room operating on another patient when that patient came in and I left and we brought this patient back to the operating room and they had been bleeding outside of their heart in the space outside of their heart. Right. And it had, there was so much bleeding that it compressed the ability of the heart to squeeze and function. And so the patient was as close to death as possible. And so I, performed an emergent sternotomy i had cracked his chest and i repaired the hole in his heart um, wow and the patient survived he walked out of the out of the hospital three weeks later um okay. and that was the the coolest thing i've probably ever done and maybe ever will do in terms of magnitude and and saving you know someone's life and you you think about all the years of training to that lets you be able to do that. Um, and so that was, you know, I guess one of the pinnacles of being a doctor and not to say that there's joy and, you know, wonders and taking care of patients and doing all sorts of things, but that was, you know, maybe the most profound, you know, life and death situation I was a part of and was able to have a good outcome with. It's an amazing story. And I think that, you know, for people who are kind of watching this or following along, whether you're in medicine or whether you're a patient or whether you're just curious about these types of things, you know, we always talk about um, surgical qualifications and plastic surgeons being um, well-trained to manage situations. And it's important to understand that our backgrounds really come from the core of surgical training and um, yourself, for example, you're a fully trained general surgeon. I'm, I'm not, I did three years of general surgery, but there, we have this core in place that um, allows us to manage critical situations that allows us to consider the entire body and the entire realm of potential surgical complications or surgical issues or surgical solutions for our patients. And, and, you know, when people say, well, I'm just going to go to, you know, an OBGYN for my liposuction, um, again, not that OBGYNs can't do liposuction, but when you think about the training and the things that we went through, it really does kind of make you say, wouldn't you just want the person that has the best, most amazing training? Um, and so it's something that uh, we really try to emphasize here. And I know that you feel the same way. 